Howdy. The purpose of this video is to introduce stereographic projections, to talk about what they are, uh, and how we use them, especially to illustrate the relationships between different symmetry elements in a point group. So the general problem is that we have um, maybe a three-dimensional object, for example, a crystal that has different facets that we might be interested in. Uh, or we could just have something like a point group where we have a number of different symmetry elements uh, that are intersecting in some particular point in space. Uh, and it's difficult to illustrate these geometric relationships. So what is the angle between this twofold axis and this threefold axis over here, for example? Um, it's difficult to illustrate these on a two-dimensional surface, so on a piece of paper. Um, a stereographic projection is a way to reduce this three-dimensional object or this point group down to a two-dimensional representation. So how do we do this? So what I want you to consider is if we have a sphere that's surrounding some point in space. So the point group might be centered here in the center of the sphere. And let's put that sphere uh, and rest it on a flat surface. And so I'm gonna call this the north pole of the sphere and this the south pole. Um, and so if I have some particular symmetry element, let's say I have a twofold axis that passes um, from that point group uh, horizontally out, then I can draw a line that starts at the North Pole, uh, intersects where that uh, symmetry element passes through the surface of the sphere, and continues to project down onto this flat surface below. And I can do this for any particular orientation. So say I have another two-dimensional um, uh, rotation axis coming out here and it intersects the surface somewhere there. So I might have a line that goes from the North Pole, comes down, passes through that intersection with the surface of the sphere and touches um, the, the flat underlying surface below right there. Um, and this flat surface becomes our stereographic projection. So you'll see a couple things. First of all, in stereographic projections, we only plot the bottom half of the sphere. Um, if we tried to plot the whole sphere, then you would have a line here that starts at the North Pole. Uh, and as my element comes higher and higher up the surface of the sphere, uh, the uh, intersection line will essentially uh, go horizontally on forever and ever. And that's no good. So that would be an infinite uh, two-dimensional representation. And uh, we choose not to have that. But that's okay, because the bottom half uh, essentially contains all of uh, the same information as the top half of the sphere would contain. Um, so then if we peel out this bottom circle uh, and we draw it now as a circle uh, on, uh, you know, just on, a, on our two-dimensional surface here, um, I would uh, plot this point as a point on my stereographic projection. Uh, and I would plot this point also as a point on my stereographic projection. Uh, and so you can see then the south pole is going to be right here in the middle. The um, boundary edge of this circle is essentially defined by lines that pass from the north pole through the equator of the sphere and come down here. And so that is the edge of our circle. And so any particular symmetry element um, from this point group or sphere um, can be projected onto this stereographic projection. Now to prove that, we're going to come back to our faceted cube uh, and try and project some of these um, facets onto a stereographic projection. So again, I have to imagine um, lines coming from the north uh, pole of the sphere passing through the surface onto my underlying uh, flat plane. And I'm going to try and draw that uh, stereographic projection over here. So this uh, zero, zero, 001 bar facet is essentially coming directly down to the south pole. So that's going to sit here, zero, zero, 001 bar. Um, my 100 zero, zero, and my zero, 010 zero are sitting on the equator of the circle and so of, of the sphere and so they're going to sit on the edge of my uh, stereographic projection here. Uh, and so you could obviously have the one bar zero zero on the opposite side or zero one bar zero. 
Um, so if I look at uh, a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of normals to planes that are all uh, lying along the same plane. So let's think about the 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 bar, and 0, 0, 1 bar. Um, if I project, uh, again, from the North Pole through this intersection of the sphere down to my stereographic projection, and I do that for each of these three points, I'm going to see that because these poles are all in a plane, then on my stereographic projection, my poles are going to all lie along one line. And I apologize that they're not actually lying on that line. Um, so then the 1, 0, 1 bar plane is going to be down here. So this happens to be uh, a crystal that has cubic symmetry. Um, and these are well defined. You can go look up stereographic net for a cubic system and you can um, you can find it plotted anywhere and and all of these uh, different poles so the zero one bar one bar would be over here zero one one bar would sit over here um, all of these poles have a specific orientation uh, with respect to each other uh, now if this is some other um, class of crystal say it's tetragonal uh, then that's going to change uh, where my uh, orthogonal pole is going to in intersect the surface of the sphere uh, and so that would change the position of um, these uh, intervening planes. So a tetragonal system for example uh, I'm going to have the same uh, orientation of my planes around the edges but the position of these internal planes is going to change a little bit. It might change uh, closer to the south pole or further away depending on whether the z-axis is longer or shorter uh, than the x and y axes. So finally, we're going to use a stereographic projection um, to illustrate the effect of a symmetry element on some general uh, position in, uh, in the point group. So what we're looking at here uh, is a fourfold roto inversion axis. Um, and we're going to start off with a general point that is sitting just above the plane. And so what's, that's what this little positive uh, symbol means. And so if you remember, fourfold roto inversion means I take that point, I rotate it one quarter of the way around the circle, so I rotate it 90 degrees, but then it gets inverted through the center uh, and will come out over here. And so when we invert it, now it's lying just below the surface of the plane, so that's the minus mark. Um, and we also have inverted uh, the pattern. Um, so you, this happens anytime you uh, reflect an object through a mirror plane or invert it through a center of symmetry. Uh, and so we designate that by having a little comma inside uh, the circle. Um, so you could think about it being right-handed here and when it gets inverted it's now left-handed. Um, so we do this process again. We rotate one quarter of the way, invert through, uh, and now again we're above the surface of the sphere uh, and we're back to right-handed orientation. Uh, and we do this one final time, we rotate 90 degrees and we invert through uh, the center uh, of the point group. And now we're sitting uh, once again just below uh, the surface and with a left-handed orientation. Um, so the fourfold uh, roto inversion, uh, one way to think about that is if you have a tetrahedron uh, and you stand it on its edge here, so there's a line that's going to extend down here, uh, then there is a fourfold roto inversion axis that passes directly through the center of that tetrahedron. Um, so this point here would be rotated 90 degrees, uh, inverted down through the center to this point, rotated 90 degrees, inverted up through the center to this point, again rotated 90 degrees, comes uh, and is inverted through the center down to this point. Um, so this general, uh, these, this use of general symbols uh, is very helpful um, to see how a single symmetry element or how a collection of elements, so a point group, um, affects uh, a single general position. Usually we start off with one general position, we operate on it with the symmetry elements, uh, and we see what are all of the symmetry related positions in that particular point group.